Hello chess friends and welcome to us out of chess channel and welcome back to our hyper accelerated ranks in Sitting defense series so in this series we're covering this very nice opening from black's perspective so it's our preparation it's our battle against e4 and today i prepared really a special video for you today i will introduce you a really beautiful theoretical novelty that i think you can use and the cool part about this novelty is actually that i think you find you play this uh, position many many times this position will happen to you many many times and i think you have to know then uh, the control you have to know what to do if you have maybe some questions about some other opportunities about other sidelines please check out our whole hyper accelerated ranks it's in the defense series because in this series we have created more than 30 videos in which I've shown you some different approaches by why some different opportunities like the close Italian Marozzi bind and different stuff. So as I said, in this video, we'll do a different approach, really a common, a common, very often played line that I think uh, bothers prob probably many of us. And uh, that's why in this video, I want you to solve you uh, for you also this position, but also then afterwards, the tactical problems about this very important line. So let's see now what is the hyper accelerated ranks it's in the defense and what is now this very important line and how we should play in this kind of, uh, in this kind of position so uh the first move by white is of course the move e4 we have the move c5 the sicilian knight you have three and we are playing down the hyper accelerated ranks it's in a way with the move um the, uh, g6 so now comes d4 c takes d4 moves like queen to d4 and similar stuff as i said we have already solved in our previous analysis in our previous video so today we're analyzing this line knight to d4 knight to c6 knight to c3 bishop to g7 attacking the knight on d4 bishop to e3 so this is now pretty standard stuff i'm pointing out after knight to f6 and bishop to c4 what white is trying to do is to go into this common yugoslav attack we have talked about the yugoslav attack many times um, from white's perspective so white is trying to play f3 queen to d2 and then to trade up your uh darko bishop by playing the move bishop to h6 after something like i don't know bishop to g7 and similar stuff h4 h5 if the position gets open somehow on the h file white is trying to somehow get the queen maybe here to h6 and uh, create a rook and queen battery and maybe even checkmate you on the h file with the support of the bishop of course then it gets dangerous the knights are very uh, very uh, good here in the center of the board so that's why you have to be careful notice also a very important thing uh, don't play the move d6 if you're playing the move d6 then you are in the common dragon sicilian the, you and if you want to play the dragon sicilian you can do it in the first place but uh, by playing many of these moves by playing with the knight first by playing with this other knight by playing with the bishop we are delaying the d6 move we are trying to play actually the move d5 although it seems quite um, impossible to play the move d5 because white has a dominant position uh, with many pieces around the square d5 but actually the d5 move is our goal i'll explain you how you can really make that happen so after move kingside casting now comes bishop to b3 this is very very important now for instance if white makes maybe a tiny little inaccurate move uh, notice after f3 the position can get already quite spectacular with queen to b6 and the targeting the b2 pawn white could maybe be um tempted here by this possibility with the move knight to f5 would now would just pick up the pawn queen to b2 and now you can maybe pick up the bishop but look at this both pieces are hanging so it's not good here to play now anymore the game from white's perspective so as i said white has to be careful white needs to play the correct move order so that's why white plays now the move bishop to b3 stays now very active with the light school bishop and is still preparing uh what's the attack it's of course the beautiful yugoslav attack f3 queen to d2 i'm pointing out again don't allow him to go into this attack i guarantee you'll not have fun if a strong player launches the yugoslav attack against you so that's why you we use the hyper accelerated uh way in order to get out of the uh out of the yugoslav attack so now we are playing the move a5 so we're not allowing here white to breathe we are not allowing him to go into this attack we want to be sl simply faster now with the move a5 for instance if white castles or something then we can continue to push here with the move a4 because we notice uh, here that uh, the knight on c3 is a little bit overloaded to the square e4 but also to the square a4 now for instance if knight to uh, a4 happens then we pick up uh the pawn on e4 if bishop to a4 happens still we can pick up of course uh the pawn on e4 because after knight to e4 the knight is suddenly deflected from the defense of the bishop and this is a pretty good game now for 
uh, uh for black so as i said uh, white needs to be careful and has to play now first the move f3 protecting the pawn on e4 but now the fun starts my recommendation is here to break and enter immediately with the move d5 in the beginning it seems like a suicide uh, because what you're doing the pawn uh the, the square d5 is three times attacked by the bishop by the knight by the pawn and so far in our series we have covered knight to d5 and bishop to d5 today we're analyzing this line e takes d5 and uh, you see now uh, we are temporarily sacrificing a pawn but now in order to get a beautiful peace activity with the move knight to b4 now you see we have a triple attack against the pawn we have twice attacked the pawn with the knights and now also with the queen a third time now white in order to stay with this pawn uh, on the board has to play knight to e2 plays this maneuver uh, liberates now the d file and is again protecting this pawn three times but again we're playing the same uh, motif with a4 deflecting the knight from the defense of uh, the pawn on d5 okay we gave up now two pawns but now uh, we're having i think a beautiful initiative because after knight to d5 we have taken now a very important centralized pawn and the game is becoming now quite quite spectacular it becomes now really tactical notice that white's king is still stuck in the center and notice that we have here a beautiful piece activity let's see uh, the strengths of our pieces the bishop is very active here the rook is also very active on the a file the bishop on c8 although it didn't play so far but in my opinion it still has a decent activity many times in many structures maybe an e6 move has been played or something and then you have problems where to go with your light school bishop so the light school bishop is still a powerful piece the knights very powerful in the center of the board dancing here in the center uh, creating really some again tactical threats and we have also a beautiful tension on the d file because sometimes uh, it's possible when we maybe pick up the queen on d1 then the rook gets deflected to d1 and then suddenly somehow we uh, white loses the battle on the a2 square because we have also twice maybe attacked the a2 square so you should not forget about this because sometimes you are having this kind of an attack and then you afterwards just pick up the pawn and gave me uh, get maybe a favorable end game so it's not also something that we should forget not many of these games are ending of course with a spectacular checkmate or something sometimes we pick up a pawn and uh, this is solid play then so let's see now here white's opportunities what really surprised me here actually that bishop to d4 is already already a mistake really wild stuff after bishop to d4 white is facing now many many tactical problems it's almost like white is almost losing here and we have to say it, bishop to d4 seems quite tempting because it makes sense we're at least undermining one threat this bishop on g7 that's beautiful we call it the dragon bishop the dark bishop the fianchetto bishop is many times the most powerful piece in the dragon sicilian so that's why in the beginning it makes sense that white wants to trade off uh, the dark bishop by playing the move bishop to d4 but bishop to d4 is already already a wild mistake because you, you can proceed now with the move bishop to f5 and let's see now what are white's options again let's see now the worst option the worst option is for instance if white castles now white is saying okay i had it enough i have one gained one pawn i want to trade off now the bishops and go into a favorable end game i have here my three versus one pawn majority i'll just trade off uh, till the end my pieces and then i'll launch here an attack and we'll probably create maybe even two connected pass pawns and we'll probably win the game but after kingside casting you have maybe this beautiful stunner bishop to c2 bishop to c2 is such a destructive move this is game over for for white this is quite stunning because after bishop to c2 that you have to play now because the queen is hanging uh now we play just bishop to d4 and notice now if the queen takes on d4 then the queen gets deflected uh, suddenly from the defense of the bishop and now we play knight to c2 the beautiful fork so uh, you pick up the rook and you have a better game notice that also still the knight is hanging we still have our progress um on the a file and notice also that uh the pawn count now uh, is the same we have now five pawns on the board and uh black is uh, uh, white is also five pawns so this is not again a three versus one pawn majority here in the queen side it's just a two versus one so okay we pick up the rook now and we'll probably somehow manage to defend against these two pawns on the queen side so let's go back after move knight to d4 if you play um 
knight takes d4 then again you have this beautiful stunning tactic knight to e3 again a new fork you see you have to now play something like knight to e6 just to prolong the game uh, we pick up the knight you're trading off maybe the queens but look at this now uh here um after after uh, rook to d8 uh, the bishop is hanging but also the rook is hanging on f1 even if you protect somehow uh, the bishop would just pick it up and the game should be over so really really wild stuff so see uh, after move bishop to d4 uh, the game is almost over so let's go back and let's search for new opportunities here for um for white instead of castling okay we are saying white doesn't have to castle what should then white do maybe rook to c1 seems like a good defensive move because uh okay we saw that in the previous example white lost the tactical battle around the square c2 but actually now comes a new stunner look how beautiful this position is now you play just a brutal move 90 d3 really really wild stuff uh, what can white do of course you have to take c takes d3 now we pick up the bishop and after knight to d4 knight to e3 notice that after c takes d3 uh the queen is suddenly disconnected from the defense of the knight this is really wild stuff knight to e3 uh, we have maybe this idea just again to sacrifice the piece just in order to uh prolong the game but uh, in my opinion this is not working so you could maybe try here some idea of queen to e2 but now we've just pick up the knight again notice that the d3 pawn is weak and you should not forget about the common a file attack that we have talked about in the beginning uh, the a file attack is also something important we have to say it because many times maybe uh, we have an opportunity to uh, maybe take out the rook uh, then afterwards also the bishop gain two pieces but so far it's not possible because of course the queen is somehow overloaded a little bit to the defense of the knight on e3 but uh in the later stage of the game maybe something clears and then uh we have a good game so the evaluation is almost plus four here for for black believe me so as i said it's a bad game so see even this seemingly good move uh knight rook to c1 is not working because of this stunning tactic knight to knight to d3 this is very very wild stuff so let's go back so we have solved now the positional problems after kingside castling and rook to c1 this is not working what makes sense of course is bishop to g7 but bishop to g7 is again not working because again you have this beautiful stunning move bishop to c2 if now bishop to c2 happens which makes really sense again you get this idea knight to uh, e3 for instance if the queen takes on d8 which makes sense the queen was under fire well, we play first knight to c2 first the check uh the king has to step back now we pick up the queen with the rook that was hanging we have to take out now with the f rook uh because uh, the rook was under fire now the bishop uh, or the, has to step back or you play uh out of the range because now three pieces are hanging notice the rook is hanging uh the bishop is hanging on uh, g7 and also the knight is hanging so in one a move we'll simply pick up a new piece maybe you can play rook to d1 but now we just play uh, king to g7 and now you can maybe play here knight to c3 but now knight to d3 is a very nice move knight to b2 so even if you play here knight to c3 then again knight to d3 with knight to b2 and similar stuff we can pick up also this pawn so it's in my opinion again a bad game here for uh uh, for, for for white so really really wild stuff that even after bishop to g7 uh it's, it's not working so let's see different opportunities we again play bishop to c2 bishop to c2 now we play knight to e3 maybe black is saying okay i'll try this one bishop to e4 there is a problem that you can fall for uh as i said it's quite quite tempting it's quite a dynamic game don't do this after bishop to e4 here uh, don't take take out the queen on d1 this seems tempting but it could cause you the whole game because after rook to d1 you could maybe try this kind of an idea queen to a5 you're getting out of the range and you're saying okay still i have a good game because i have this beautiful discovered attack but look at this white picks up simply the rook on f8 you play this check it seems tempting again you play king to f1 you play also here uh this one king to f8 now white picks up simply the knight on d3 you are uh maybe taking out also here the 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 knight on a4 but in my opinion this is simply not enough compensation white will eventually play knight to c3 will play king to f2 will eventually maybe double up the rooks on the d file and with 
two ro uh, with the rook and two minor pieces against the queen uh and this pawn my majority on the queen side i think uh white could have really a solid game so don't do that uh this move bishop to e4 has to be known i think in this uh, in this continuation so don't take out the queen on d1 we are playing simply now queen to a5 we're getting out of the range look what happens for instance if white takes out now uh the rook on f8 we are playing this one now it's working because the knight is still here this knight creates a double check by the queen and by the um, uh, by the knight and now it's a beautiful checkmate the king doesn't have any uh, good scores even the f1 square is covered now by the knight on e3 this would be a really really devastating game again for for the um, for black after queen to a5 uh what you could do is of course retreat with your bishop to c3 but now we just play knight to d1 uh we and pick up the queen what you could also do is maybe knight from a to c3 you're again uh retreating with your knight because we have seen in a couple of examples that the knight was lose again you're sacrificing the queen <clears throat> it seems like it could be maybe enough compensation here uh but now we just again pick up uh, here the bishop and uh this is not good so you could maybe try here bishop to f Faked, but now we've played first knight to c3 maybe b to c3 king to have faked now in my opinion it's a different story uh, because after king to have two the king is quite endangered we have still our f5 um, uh, uh, e5 opportunity so uh the bishop is loose here so it's still a good game i think for um uh for for black notice in this scenario we have here only a one versus one situation when it comes to the pawn so in the previous example uh, white still has uh two of its pawns on the board so it's in my opinion now suddenly a good game here for black again so as i said this idea is also not working so let's go really really back to this bishop to d4 move so as i said bishop to d4 is almost like losing here for for white be prepared about this move many times uh, white will try eventually to simplify the game by playing the move bishop to d4 don't worry so much bishop to f5 is the winning game as i said even if um, black takes out the uh, bishop on g7 you don't pick up the bishop you play this stunning tactic and i guarantee you uh, this is working for you i couldn't find any games in the database in this particular line in master level i only found uh, two games in the lead chess database so uh, there were two games played by uh, two uh, good players around 2500 rating points on lead chess but no games in the database in some games played by grand masters inter masters fide masters similar stuff bishop to c2 is destroying here uh white's position really really stunning tactical shot so let's go back uh instead of this move bishop to d4 white should play here we have to also know what white should play because uh you cannot uh, of course expect that white will play bishop to d4 all the time but now after move um, uh, bishop to f2 we should proceed here with the move b5 now the game becomes quite spectacular after knight to b6 knight to b6 queen to d8 you have to play the game like this now i think from white's perspective rook to d8 bishop to uh, d6 you see this is now the tactical shot that white will try but now i still i kind of like uh, here this position of blacks especially after rook to e um, um, Eight, we have still the tension we have still this powerful knight uh that controls both of the score c2 and uh, a2 uh the bishop will become also an active piece on f5 so in my opinion again a playable position now for for black so as i said maybe uh after move b5 white doesn't have to play necessarily the move knight to b6 you can of course play knight to c3 but now we play knight to c3 knight to c3 queen to d1 you have to even take out now with the king if you take out uh now with the uh with the rook there is now this beautiful line that simplifies again the game bishop to c3 b takes c3 uh bish knight takes a2 okay you could maybe get pinned but now with bishop to e6 uh here you can defend everything bishop to e6 f takes e6 and now all the pawn is hanging so still a good game i think here for uh, uh um for, for black the knight is very powerful we can play also b4 here the continuation so probably this would be a drawish drawish ending for both sides so as i said bishop to d4 
counted really as a mistake because now you have beautiful tactical motifs with the move bishop to c bishop to f5 and then bishop to c2 white needs really to play here the move bishop to f2 but still it's still a complicated game because of this possibility to play the move b5 so this is now a novelty i hope you enjoyed this line i hope you get this position if you have some questions you can of course text me in the comment section below i will try to answer your questions about this opening line what bothers you but you can also check out the videos as i said we have created about 30 videos uh, i think we have solved many pr problems in that videos about hyper accelerated ranks and still defense so please check it out here's the link of our whole playlist and if you have trouble maybe to play as black against the, the d4 uh, you can also check my nimzo in the defense here's also the link of our whole playlist and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what you say chess is the best of course